Hi there. I've been asked to do a video to talk about how to taste wine. So I, I thought actually I'd maybe break that up a little um, and talk about how to taste red wine. So I'll do another busy video describing tasting white wine. So what I've got here, I've got um, a Chianti, Valiano's Poggio Teo Chianti Classico 2016. Um, I've got a fair sized glass. I've got a piece of white paper. Um, so let's talk through this, shall we? I mean, I think some people find um, they're a little anxious about wine tasting. There's a certain um, social worry about being found not to know know about wines. Not, don't worry about that in the slightest. Wine is for enjoyment and not worrying about what other people think. In fact, honesty about what they're tasting is probably the most important thing when it comes to assessing a wine. So to assess a wine, and I'm saying assess rather than taste, there are actually three steps because you're going to look at it, you're going to assess the way it looks, you're going to assess the way that it smells, and then finally taste. So it's it's part of a process of assessment. Um, so for this wine, the first, the, well, for any wine, the, the, the first thing that I'm going to do is look at the colour. So hence the piece of white paper on the table there. I've got some nice light there so I can see. Um, I'm looking through the wine. I've flattened it out so that it's... Um, it's, it's not quite as dense. You can see how it's losing colour to the rim there. And, and what you're talking about is what sort of reds you're seeing on a red wine. So is this a, a vibrant young purple red uh, with sort of blues in the hue? Is it a ruby red? Is it um, starting to lose colour and becoming more garnet? Or has it gone brown? Um, I guess you're also looking for, is there um, a haze in the wine or anything like that? And also ask yourself, is it bright it, or has it gone dull and, and is it starting to fade? Um, people also talk about when, they, when you swirl, um, you can perhaps see there are, are, are legs running down the, the glass. I don't know how easily you see that in the, um, in the, in the, in the quality of the video. Um, what those are, they're just, um, it's alcohol and tannin. It's the, the solidity of the wine, I guess, expressing itself. Um, and running down the glass. So this, this tells me this has probably got reasonable alcohol and a fair amount of tannin. But it's not a really big factor that you need to spend a lot of time looking at because both these factors we'll assess when we taste the wine. So stage two is to is to give it a good smell. Um, so if you give the wine a swirl, that's why I've only filled this about a quarter of the way up, so a quarter to a third of the way full, um, and a nice size glass, and this breaks up the surface tension of the wine and it's releasing the aromas into the bowl of the glass. So stick your nose right in and take a, a large breath. Um, so questions you, are, you can ask yourself about um, the nose of a wine is, how intense is it? Is, are these flavours really jumping out at me or am I having to look at them? Um, then you're asking yourself, what sort of flavours are they? Um, are they fruit flavours? Are they other flavours that may, may come from production. So in this case, I'm, I'm assessing the fruit, and this is fruit on a sort of a, a red end of the spectrum, but this is not light red fruit, like sort of strawberry or perhaps raspberry. This is more towards a sort of a red cherry, uh, perhaps a little plum, not quite a sort of mulberry sort of level. And then, if you were, if you had a, a a bigger wine, you might go on to sort of black fruits like um, uh, black currant, blackberry, possibly black cherry. Because remember, cherry goes through a ripeness, through from sort of sharp red through to uh, a deeper black. And then at the furthest end of the black spectrum, you'll almost get sort of flavours of olives or perhaps even currants. You know, sort of a dried raisiny sort of note. Um, as I say, this has a medium intensity, maybe it doesn't say it had a medium intensity, but it has a medium intensity of um, sort of red cherry, maybe a touch of red currant, and, and certainly red plum. But there are other notes in there as well, pointing to the fact that this wine's had time in, in oak barrel. So you can smell a tiny touch of sort of slightly dusty cedar, maybe sort of graphite, a bit like sort of um, the shavings of a pencil or something like that. Um, maybe slightly earthy. You know, different people will see the same aroma in a slightly different way. Um, so stage three, try the wine. Take a, a fair-sized gulp. Excuse 
excuse me there, I'm just passing air over the wine as I sort of suck it through my teeth on my tongue. And that helps to reveal the flavours. Um, so the first thing you're looking for is what, what are the, well, first thing most people look for is what, what is the fruit on the wine? That's, that's what most people are interested in. And here we've got a sort of a, again, remember that spectrum of flavours. There's almost a sort of a sour red cherry, and again, the sort of plum, the red plum notes. It's quite rich. Um, but when I'm saying sour, I think that's a reflection of the wine's acidity. So that's, that's another structural part of the wine, the acidity. And you can feel acidity on the sides of your tongue, and I can feel I'm salivating. So this has got quite good acidity. Another structural part of the wine would be its alcohol. Um, looking at the bottle, this says it's 13.5% alcohol. But I'm not feeling a particularly hot alcohol burn at the back of my tongue. Um, so, uh, you know, this the alcohol on this wine is in balance. It's in balance with the fruit and the tannins and that. So that's that's the next stage. Um, you might, when you're assessing a wine, think about how much sugar is in there, you know, how sweet is it. But the majority of red wines are dry. Um, so you'd probably only mention that if it happened to have some sweetness because that would be, you know, that would stand out. Um, instead, for a red wine, we think about its structure, we think about its tannins. And what are tannins? Well, it, it, it's like when you drink tea, it's um, the solids within the wine. And those solids have come from the um, skins of the grapes that it's made with. Um, if the wine is macerated for a long time, they come from the pips of the grapes. And also, if it's spent time in oak barrels um, or had oak treatments, it will gain tannins from that. So that's its structure. And this wine tastes quite sort of grainy. They're fine tannins. But they're drying out my mouth, so that's not a that's not a sugar dryness. That's an astringency, but it's, it's only slight, um, and it's in balance with the fruit flavours, which are still coming through. So it's not drying the end of the palate out. Um, so other other factors you might think about there is how long do the flavours last, and how well balanced is the wine. Well, the the um, acidity in this wine is lifting the fruit flavours really nicely. The alcohol isn't out of balance and as a result the finish has a nice length not exceptionally long but good enough and I can still taste it after a few seconds so um, my assessment of this wine is is that uh, it's a nice enough um, Chianti Classico it's it's not one of the best but it's it's providing good drinking I could go on and make an assessment about whether I think the wine will age I think it probably would but not significantly um, it would need probably probably more structure to be able to do that. But um, just to, I hope that this video has given you some idea of some um, structures you can use to assess a wine when you're tasting, just, just to make it easier to, to come out with a, a simple No, you don't have to use all of them, but you know if you can think about the structure of fruit, acid, alcohol, tannins, that will enable you to put together a fairly balanced tasting note for red wine. So, cheers. Bye.